Welcome back, everybody. This is Todd Sylvester with the Todd Sylvester Inspires Belief Cast. Thank you for joining us. And I want to give a shout out again to our sponsor, Veracity Networks. Thank you for believing in me. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in week after week. We're, we're killing it, man. And I appreciate it so much. And I, I just want you to know how much gratitude I have for that. And this is helping so many people. And I'm also grateful for all the guests. Um, they're amazing people who come on and they're vulnerable and they're doing amazing things and they're trying to make this world a better place. And I'm really trying to feature those kind of people. And today's no different. Today we're joined by Delee Cox. Thanks for joining us, Delee. Thank you for having me. Yes. So a little background on Delee. She is a wardrobe stylist, with a stylist, right? Right. <laughs> uh, with a passion for slow fashion, which I'm not sure exactly what that means, but we're going to talk about that. Um, she started her career as a hairstylist, but found true passion when she realized um, consumerism and love for fashion was harming our planet, which I'm real excited to hear what you're doing there and how you're trying to save the, the planet that way. Um, you, you know, you launched a business uh, styling for women head to toe, educating middle class Americans about the impact of the fast fashion industry. And I, I know I've heard stuff like that on the news and things like that. So I'm so interested to hear what that is all about. You know, Dali has been featured on, you know, KUTV, Studio 5, many other uh, channels as well. She's done podcasts. Um, she's got an amazing website where she uh, provides all kinds of services, which we'll get into as well. And uh, she's just a, a, an amazing person who's doing great things on this planet. And so um, I'm excited to have you on, Dali. Thank you so much. That was yeah. a great introduction. <laughs> yes, thank you. I hope I said everything correctly. Absolutely. It's always sometime... it made me sound great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't we start with, you know, because obviously you're doing some great things on this uh, with your platform and everything that you're doing, but I want people to get to know you a little bit better. So tell us where you grew up and, and a little bit about your childhood. So I grew up in Washington State. Okay. Um, I actually grew up on a small farm. There was really? five of us kids. I have an older sister and then three younger brothers. So um, we grew up in a very traditional, um, quite strict LDS household. Okay. And the emphasis was on perfection and appearance. Mm. So we took that um, scripture of be thou perfect to <laughs> kind of extreme of people better see you being perfect. Right. So I took that into my personal appearance and put a lot of emphasis on um, yeah. how I looked and how I carried myself and things like that. And we were also taught to work. So we worked the farm. <laughs> That's one good thing about a farm. You it's have to work, true. right? It's true. Yeah. So, and then by the time I was 11 or 12, I started babysitting. I nannied on the summers and I taught piano lessons after school. And I had an array of jobs through junior high and high school. I worked at a guitar manufacturing plant really? at one point and then learned oh, how to cool. weld. Wow. So <laughs> that that's a, way cool. That was a really fun yeah. job. Um, then I worked at a tanning <laughs> salon, did the whole tanning to the point <laughs> of extreme, things yeah. like that. But when it was time to go to college, I had absolutely nothing to show for it monetarily mm. because I had spent all of my money on clothing okay. and food. Um, mm. Food was another thing that was hard to come by in my house. My mom really struggled with body image. And it was during that like late 80s, 90s diet culture. Yeah. So she would post quotes all over the um, kitchen, like nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. <laughs> oh, One time wow. she cut out pictures of um, ladies from magazines, skinny women, and posted them all over the cabinets. Really? Yeah, it was just the culture that we lived in and this idea that you could... Um, just make yourself into something perfect or yeah. or that your outward appearance was so much a part of you. Right. So um, that was a bit of mixed messaging. And so I spent a ton of my money on clothing. And because yeah. um, you between... wanted because you wanted to look good. Exactly. You wanted to look the part. Right? And I loved fashion. I loved beauty. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But when taken to extreme um, between my wardrobe, my sister's wardrobe, and our friends, I didn't wear the same outfit twice mm. for an entire school year. Wow. And I kind of prided myself in that, that I was wearing different things all the time. <laughs> and it kind of became like a challenge. So then I went to college. I went to cosmetology well, school. Uh, and I'm going to pause just oh, for a second. Ahead. No, and I'm sorry, because I want to go back to, so here you are, you're walking into the kitchen and you see all yeah. these pictures of these skinny women. 
how did that play on your psyche? Like, tell us how that felt or, you know, Mm -hmm. how challenging that was. Yes, it was just, um, I think the hard part was just this need to be perfect and, and you could only fit into a certain box for that. Um, my aunt used to say you can't be smart and pretty. And so my sister and I quickly divvied out which one we were and which one we weren't. And I knew I was not ever as smart as her. And so I kind of tried to make up for it okay. in my personal the appearance you, and yeah. how I how I carried myself. Um, and my sister is an amazing woman. Now she, um, sure. she has five kids and she's going back to school. She's... Um, in hospice and yeah just doing amazing things she just has a heart of gold and she's also beautiful so we kind of through adulthood realized that these mixed messages or these like all or nothing messages weren't helpful yeah Yeah, you're like (laughs) hey we can be smart and beautiful yeah that's kind of a good realization (laughs) right yeah well and again i think reason why i point that out is i think a lot of us when we're growing up we go we we buy into these belief systems that get thrown out at us because we're kids. We don't know. Okay, I guess I'm supposed to be skinny, right? Or exactly, right? yeah. And and like you said, you you know you hear this statement. You know you can't be smart and pretty. Mm-hmm. And when it's coming from a an, an adult figure, you you just kind of take it for oh, I guess it must be true. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. we're kids. We don't know. Exactly. So I was just curious on how that played on you know with the way you carried yourself. So yes. So yeah. mine turned more towards the love of fashion and consuming things. Yeah. Um, luckily, it didn't turn into um, disordered eating or eating disorder or anything like that. Um, but it was more the consumerism. Gotcha. That was the, gotcha. That was the no, ticket. Thank you. Well, so then you, you head off to college. Yeah. And how did that go? Um, suddenly my budget was was a lot different. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> and, and because of the way I was raised, I wasn't willing to go into debt. That was never my thing. I was a, kind of terrified of finances okay. because we didn't have much. And what we did have, we tended to spend on things <laughs> mm-hmm. instead of, you know, basic necessities. So um, I got to college. I met my husband. Um, I married really well. I feel like I got lucky. Although my therapist says she doesn't believe in luck that way. But um, I just, I married really well in the way that we're extremely compatible and we work well as a team. And um, we've been willing to learn how to communicate and all those things. That's awesome. So um, my budget changed. My husband was in school. We went across the country. We lived in Virginia. Then we lived back in Washington. And um, I started wanting to keep up this appearance, but I had to do it in a less expensive way. So I started secondhand shopping, getting more creative. Um, I had four kids in um, my 20s. I think I had my last baby at 30, 31. And so life just kind of sped up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When you start having kids, you kind of go, wow. Yeah. It's busy. (laughs) It's busy. Right. And especially when you have them that close together, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I can relate. I have four kids as well, and we had them really close together. Uh-huh. And, and I think back, they're all older now. I mean, when I say older, my youngest is 20. But uh, it, was, it was. It was it was chaotic. I mean, it was fun, obviously, and it was, it was go- all good. But, man, it sure speeds up life. Yes, definitely. And then those mindsets start to change. Priorities yeah. start to change. Exactly. But then as our budget increased and my husband became more um, – established in his career then I started the shopping again and I was super excited to find deals and cheap clothing and so my wardrobe became kind of a constant rotation of bringing things in and discarding them and thinking I was doing some good by donating these clothes wow wow well again I know you're very passionate about that it's what you do for a living now but uh before we get into that I mean so as you're going through this did you find that uh you know, kind of like struggling with perfectionism continued on even, you know, you even mentioned it like, I was like, man, I, I'm, I'm still trying to portray a certain way. Did, did you find that that was still going on, even though you're married, you got kids and your focuses have changed? Definitely. It took me becoming an adult and, and moving back to Washington to my childhood area to realize, um, that those mindsets were even there. Okay. And so, um, it was a it was a lot of growth. It was a lot yeah. of therapy. It was a lot of <laughs> we moved to Utah and kind of started our or continued our life here. Yeah. And we found a lot of peace here and a lot yeah. of um good connections and 
and things yeah. like that. Well, I'm glad too that you bring up that you you went to therapy because I think sometimes people think, oh, therapy, like it's almost like that's kind of got like a stigma around it and it's not a good thing. But I mean, and again, I think we all need therapy, right? Oh, we could I all, agree. I mean, I, this it's what I do for a living and I need to talk to people and I need help all the time. So, um, but I love that, uh, that that was a part of your, you, you know, it's been a part of your journey. It sounds like it still is even. And I think that's awesome that you, that you reached out and did something like that to help you. Thank you. Um, when we moved here, my therapist was one of the first people I met. I felt like it was very a divine, divine meeting yeah. because I was kind of too scared to go to therapy in my hometown that I grew up in. <laughs> so <laughs> right. yeah, I, hear you. I don't know why that just did, never appealed to me. So moving here and having the freedom to meet new people <laughs> sure, I understand. and not tell all the family secrets to somebody who knows your family yeah, like, was was a little more comfortable for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get that completely. So, you know, why don't we jump ahead and just talk about, tell us about your business, why you started it, and what's th what's the point around it. And I know I want to start off with this, though. There's a beautiful quote on your website that says, clothes aren't going to change the world, but the women who wear them will. Yeah, I just I, That's powerful. I love that. That completely resonated with me. So I found slow fashion as I was watching all of these YouTube women do their hauls and, okay. you know, right. getting online and seeing seeing all this consumerism and shopping online a lot. And I came across slow fashion and it changed my mindset. Yeah, and, and I, I honestly am not sure what that even is. Will you explain okay. that to our listeners? Um, that's a great <laughs> question. So slow fashion, there's a couple things that I wanted to find then. So slow fashion is kind of the umbrella of conscious consumerism. It's taking oh. Okay. a look at what you are buying and its effect on the planet. So it's um, caring for your clothes, wearing them, slowing your consumption, and then mm. discarding your clothing responsibly. Gotcha. And then there's sustainable fashion. That one is thrown out a lot. It's kind of like a hot topic right now. Yeah. And <laughs> that has to do with how our clothes are made and the pro production process, um, how hard it is on the environment, the materials we use, the fact that they're made in other countries and then brought here yeah. and then shipped back a lot of times. So that's sustainable fashion. And then ethical fashion is the one that really resonated with me. And ethical fashion is acknowledging that there are human beings behind the clothing we wear. Mm. So Talk our clothes, that, yeah. your whole outfit, my whole outfit, it's not made by machines. You know, we haven't been able to like print clothes from 3D printers yet. Right. Every article of clothing has a person behind it, a person sitting usually in oh, terrible working conditions yeah. um, under extreme um, deadlines and sitting behind a sewing machine. Yeah. Wow. We'll talk more about that because I, I mean, I, I, I know what you're saying is correct, but I, I honestly never think of that. Like when I'm putting on clothes, yes, I never, yeah. my mind never goes there. And, but I love that you're very conscious about that. So talk about how, talk more about how our clothing does affect the planet. If you don't mind sharing more details around that and then talk about how the people behind it and how that also plays a part. Absolutely. Um, so I came across a um, documentary, The True Cost. Mm. Um, and it's by Andrew Morgan. He directed it and um, produced it. And he started it because he saw an article that was about the Rana Plaza collapse in oh, 2013. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this was a major factory in Bangladesh. It was mostly um, a clothing factory. And it had so many cracks. And, and it was in such disarray that it just collapsed one day, killing over 1,100 people, oh, injuring wow. 2,500 people. And he just saw an article and thought, what? Like this is where my clothes come from. This wasn't a natural really? disaster. This wasn't an earthquake. This right. was literally the condition of the building and packed full of these workers. So um, he started wow. digging deeper and made this documentary. I highly recommend it. Um, he traveled and found, you know, went and toured these facilities and wanted to really see where his clothes yeah. came from. And what he found was really, really um, alarming. So what happens is... 97% of our clothing is outsourced now. 
Really? And so we have these big brands yeah. that are making billions of dollars and they outsource all their clothing because they can get it made so much cheaper than they can here yeah, sure. with labor laws yeah. and minimum wage and things like that. So right. a lot of our clothing came from China for a long time. Well, certain parts of China started getting... Um, wanting to unionize and wanting better pay and wanting more more rights so then we just went to the lowest bidder and we were like mm. people in the in the all over the globe were saying hey we can we can make your stuff we can make your stuff so it's gone to factories mostly in bangladesh but all over the all over the world who really have no laws or guidelines Right. Um, around what their factory should be. So um, he found people working, you know, staggering hours, extreme overcrowding, heat to the point that people would pass out from heat exhaustion, wow. and um, children working, or not so much working, but children at the floor. 85% um, of the workers in these garment factories are women. And if they don't have child care, if they don't have sick leave, they don't have anything like that. They have to bring their kids Yeah, they have to bring their kids and their kids are sitting conditions. on the floors. Dang. So if you contrast that to say like wow. influencers, yeah. um, and I, I do understand <laughs> um, that an influencer is a job. It's a sales job. Yeah. Um, it came a time when Instagram and Facebook and YouTube were launching and they had a choice. They could either be a subscription based or advertising based. Yeah, right? right. And they chose advertising they chose based advertising, yeah. for better or worse. Yeah. You know, there's, there's argument that it like, distributes the wealth a little bit better which i would agree with but right. now we're bombarded by these advertising so and these influencers so you take an influencer and they they do a haul and they buy all these clothes let's say from h&m h&m zara walmart target these are some of the companies who have you know the biggest rap for right. being these fast fashion brands and they do a haul from h&m and they're trying to sell these products and every yeah. time you click through and buy they get a percentage you know, oh, from the clothing that gotcha. you buy through okay. them. Like it's a click, click, click situation. And the influencer is making more than the woman who actually is made the it. clothes. Wow. And she's in her house and she's, you know, probably got childcare and, you know, a, a flexible wow. schedule and all this stuff. And I'm, I don't mean to bash them as a profession. I'm just saying we just need to real. see it for what it is. Yep. And if influencers could really take a look at behind the scenes, I feel like a lot of times we're just living in an extremely privileged place. For sure. And so um, what we can do is ask our influencers to support more sustainable brands, to look into the brands that they are supporting. And we have a lot of buying power in this. Yeah, I love that. And I think, you know, when you, you know, when you, like, for instance, I'll be honest with you, the sponsor that I have, Veracity Networks, you know, I know this company. I, they're based out of, you know, here locally, oh, but they're great. worldwide. Yeah. They're all over the place. Mm -hmm. But, and, and I know the owners, the CEOs, I know how they treat their employees. I mean, the list goes on, right? And, and, and I just, because I know them really well. And so I love that you say that. I think if we're going to pitch a product, maybe we, we better figure all that out. Cause I, you know, and I'm, I'm guilty of it too, uh, for sure, where I don't think that through. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So, so is that part of what you do um, as part of your business? Is you're trying to help people, you know, see this in a more clear way? Exactly. So I found all this and I started becoming kind of obsessed with it. I yeah. started touring. <laughs> <laughs> I started calling and touring um, distribution centers that I donated to. Really? I yeah. I started like I would watch the documentary and then I'd watch it again and take notes and oh, I would wow. just I would just kind of became obsessed with this idea that yeah. I was I was contributing so much to this problem and that I had no idea. So it's my changes started out slow as right. if I was like, okay, I will just shop my favorite brands and just like write letters. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I will write letters and I will just shop less. And and that was a good starting point for me. And then as I I make as I became more familiar with it. And then I started my business, which I wanted to help women find confidence and shop their own closet. That's my big tagline is to shop your own closet and wear what Ooh, they like have. It. Love it. Um, then I started really realizing that we are the problem. Um, the fast fashion average is only wearing something five times before we discard it. 
Wow. Yes, only five times. So it comes to us right. from across the world. Yeah. And it goes in these shops. Um, they used to have, stores used to have like four seasons a year. Yeah. And they would do a fashion show in a season. Now they have 52. Oh, wow. They get new clothes every week. And that's why we're getting the emails of new arrivals and shop this and all the ads. And the algorithm algorithms pick it up. Yeah. And, you know, we're constantly being sold to. For so, sure. That's the other end of it. But these clothes come from other countries. We we buy them. We wear them only a couple of times. And then we discard them. Either throw them away or donate them. And um, donation centers are doing some great things. I went and toured a couple of the local ones and I right. called. And so donating is still the best thing to do. They can recycle it. Right. They can sell it for rags. Um, they can use it for... <laughs> Um, to create jobs in the United States. Um, clothes usually stay on the floor of something like a DI or a Savers. Those yeah. are a couple of the local ones. Sure. They stay on the floor for about six weeks. And if they're not sold, then they're shifted into another thing, um, category, I guess, and redistributed another way. Okay. They don't, I know DI doesn't ship overseas anymore. It's just not okay. environmentally cost effective, yeah. but they do, um, ship in the u.s to okay. natural disasters people in need things like that gotcha. so so clothing is donated but the problem the other problem is our clothing is so cheap it's not meant to last yeah. it's mostly made of the synthetic fiber fibers polyester is on the rise and it takes 200 years to decompose in our landfills 200 200 years, years we are wearing plastic <laughs> yeah i never thought see yeah again this is such good information we're wearing plastic our, our our closets are stuffed full of it and then we donate it thinking oh somebody could use this yeah. but they generally don't the clothes that are shipped back to other countries for mm -hmm. families in need or people in need well those are the countries that are making the clothes so they have plenty of clothes <laughs> right. they don't need them they, they end up in their landfills them. or they have to burn them and that's environmentally yeah, horrible the and yeah the, the fumes and chemicals coming yeah. out from burning it's not good for the environment exactly so yeah wow so it becomes this vicious cycle and we've just kind of let it happen yeah and it's interesting. It's kind of like the food system, how that took a turn in yep. the 60s and 70s. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then it took us like 20 <laughs> years to be like, oh, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. What are we doing here? <laughs> That's what the fashion industry is. And what we're trying to do is just get brands to be more transparent. Okay. It's like, just tell us where your clothes are made. Yeah. And they'll say, oh, it's not our factory. We don't own it. You know, yeah. um, we, we don't know any of the regulations. It doesn't matter. Um, when that... Um, a building collapsed the Rana Plaza. They had about 29 companies that they could track uh -huh. that um, produced clothing in that building. Only nine attended a hearing to help con compensate the workers who were injured. Um, some of the brands that refused to pay were Walmart, Mango, Primark, which Primark is is more well known in other countries. And yeah. here in the U.S., it's called J.C. Penney's. Okay. And so we don't really know what's going on behind the scenes of these big yeah. brands. And wow. they're kind of like at this point getting away with it. Yeah. And I think people really do care. Right. Like we care. Yeah. So. Um, well, it's like you're, you're actually kind of blowing my mind right now because I do care. But what I, I, but I don't, I mean, I, I, I honestly wear like the same five things every week. <laughs> you could ask people I work with. They'll be like, yep, that's Todd's Tuesday outfit, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but. I never really think of it this way, and I think I love what you're doing, and I, I what a great mission, if that's a way to put it, is that you're trying to to make a difference in in, in bringing awareness about this. But yeah, it's just kind of blowing my mind because I never really think of it that way. Oh well, thank you. I it blew my mind <laughs> yeah. when I found it, and then realized yeah. I was so much a part of the problem. And yeah. us here in the United States, middle class Americans, I can afford better, right? But I don't. I didn't know better. So what, I mean, just asking a, a question here, what have you found is the answer if there is one? And, and maybe there's not a, a complete answer for how we fix this, but maybe it comes down to the individual. And I think we're going to get into that. But tell us about that and what that looks like. Yes. So that is the exciting news. Okay, good. <laughs> is we all have to wear clothes, right? Yeah. Like it's illegal to walk around naked. Sure. 
You have to wear clothes. <laughs> so we all have a vote in this and we all have a say in this. And I was surprised that like little changes were the answer. Okay. I think sometimes we get compassion fatigue when we hear of these like major problems and yeah. world problems and it just right. seems so daunting but there's such good news in what you can do and why i started my business um the first one is we can wear and care for our clothing right. so we can treat it like it has some value we can wear what we have instead of constantly wanting to buy new we can shop less and shop with intention this was something i struggled with i just saw a sale or saw something yeah. shiny and would buy it without really thinking, yeah. will I actually like this? Yeah. Does it fit into my wardrobe? Will I wear it? Mm. So shopping with intention, I provide a list with all of my clients. I go through their closet, we create outfits, and then I provide them a shopping list oh, wow. to help with the holes in their wardrobe and encourage them to take their time and shop with intention. Real quick, I yeah. love that, by the way. Tell us about the power of in intention. Talk about that for a minute. Oh, that's how long do we have? <laughs> I know, I know, it's a big question, but I, I, I'm passionate about that part because it's, a, it's something that I teach my clients, but in a different realm. I mean, I'm, I'm in the addiction recovery world, uh -huh. but I love that because I think there's so much power on that. So t tell yes. us a little bit about why you do that. Yeah, taking your power back and shopping with intention. So it really starts with, as far as fashion, it starts with really knowing yourself. Okay. And understanding yourself yeah. and not being influenced by things that aren't for you. So I encourage women to find their own personal style and mm. to understand what works for them, which takes a lot of trial, trial and error. Right. I, we talk a lot about dressing their body mm -hmm. and what you feel comfortable in, what fits your lifestyle. You could have a closet full of prom dresses, but if you don't go to prom anymore, you know, <laughs> right. that's kind of an extreme example but, that but popped that, out there. But it's a good point. But yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it has to fit your lifestyle. So we break down all of those things and then we dig into their closet and see why they bought what they bought. It's like everything that ended up there, how did it end up yeah, there? Yeah, where'd you get this where'd and why? Where'd you get this yeah. and why? And what do you love about <laughs> it? And what don't you love about it? We're dissecting those intentions from the beginning. And then you start to realize um, what works for you. Yeah. And then when your intention shifts to um, your own goals of, I want a closet that is um great for me that I can easily get dressed out of yeah. that I that supports my values um, things like that then then that's where the intention changes so a lot of my clients come to me in the name of fashion and wanting to update their style and then I just yeah. like sneak the slow fashion in there <laughs> sneak it in there I just we sneak go. it in there like let's shop with the list hey let's wear this a little bit more yeah. and let's yeah. um maybe look into other brands. So well, they, I love what you said. You're, you take the power back. You're yes. taking your power back when you do it this way. Yeah. And versus just kind of willy-nilly doing whatever. And, oh, that looks good. It's on sale. I'll buy, I'll buy three of them. Exactly. Right? It's like, well, why'd you buy three? What was on sale? Exactly. Do you need three? No. Yeah. And getting that little high, you could probably speak more to this than I can. Yeah. That little addictive brain. And for some of us, like, it's like, Addiction's the taboo subject of, oh, I would never be addicted to that. Oh. But shopping, especially for a lot of middle class women, is one of those addictions, dare I say, that is socially acceptable. And you yeah. get that high when you buy something, yep. and then the high is gone even by the time it arrives. Yeah. And it shows up at your door and you're Absolutely. like, I don't even remember what's in this package. Yeah. Who, or who ordered from Amazon again? <laughs> exactly. Why is this at my door? But it's like, oh, I'm excited to go open the box. Yes. And yeah, then it's, it's, you, you get, get you get like a double boost yeah, shopping you do. that way. Well, yeah, it releases dopamine, what makes okay. you feel good, which is very highly, highly addictive. Dopamine is is the highly addictive chemical that our body produces. And we want more of it because it, uh, naturally it feels good. Yeah, we're so, supposed to have. So like whether it's shopping extent. or something else, but you're right. Uh, there's a lot of people who are quote unquote addicted to shopping because they want that rush. They want that high. Mm -hmm. Why'd you buy it? I don't know, but it felt good opening that box. I'll exactly, tell you. Right? Exactly. And then the thill of the deal. That yeah. was kind of mine. Of the deal. Oh my goodness. I'd <laughs> That's buy a good... yeah, I'd find a ten dollar shirt at Target and I would like brag about yeah. it, you know? And, oh, and I gotta, now I, I look gotta at tell it, you oh, a funny man. quick story, a little side okay, note. Go ahead. My wife comes home from Walmart a couple weeks she's probably killing me when I'm saying this. <laughs> she found a three dollar pair of pants and I promise you this, you'd be really proud. Like <laughs> you would not, you would never guess there were $3. Mm -hmm. She put them on and she goes, these were three bucks. 
and they're like these really stretchy whatever yeah. and but when i see them on her i would never have if she would have told me she bought them you know at american eagle or you know or whatever yeah. for this amount i would have been like oh really wow okay I, I, you would never know so anyway totally she found the deal and she was so excited it is so exciting <laughs> i i was a deal person right and now my my mind shift and my intention has shift and yeah. so price is very very low on the criteria it's like probably the last thing i look at yeah. not because i have an endless budget but because i'm at all my other criteria and my intention behind bringing clothing into my closet is so different. And yeah. so the price is the last thing that I look for. So sometimes I do spend, definitely spend more to support brands. Okay. But that brings me to my next point sure. is the other thing you can do is shop secondhand. Mm, if we yeah. are constantly buying new clothes and donating them, we're part of the problem. As opposed to if you donate clothes, shop secondhand there's amazing yeah. things almost everything i'm wearing is secondhand today really this is secondhand. And you look really this nice is secondhand. Yeah. oh thanks no this seriously. is a um sustainable brand okay um and then that's the other thing is shop sustainable brands there are brands that are doing amazing things so yeah. even if you just like do a percentage of your closet say i'm gonna shop 25 percent. i'm gonna shop 50 percent. when my kids went back to school this last year kids clothing man they grow out of it like weeds. So it's hard. Quickly. You know, they yeah. wear it out. I have three boys and one girl and they all have different tastes and styles and all of that. So I decided I was going to do 50% sustainable, okay. which meant secondhand or buying like organic, um, right. you know, cottons and things like that. Yeah. And I was able to do pretty well. So wow. there's amazing brands doing amazing yeah. things. Most people ask me, where do you shop? That's like yeah. their main question. Where do you shop? And sometimes I want to say, that's not the point. <laughs> right. Yeah. The point is how I shop has completely changed. But if you do want to know where I shop, it's almost all secondhand. Yeah. And then I have some sustainable brands that I love. Well, again, I love what you said, how you shop. It's, it's with intention. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, it's, you know, I teach this too with, with people I deal with is we have to start behaving differently. Yes. Right. So that's what you're basically doing. You're behaving differently with the way you mm -hmm. shop now, right? Yes. And then what I always say is eventually your thoughts and emotions will catch up with that. So start, it's, it's like the old saying, act as if until you become. Yeah. Yeah. So I love that you're doing that. That's really cool. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I know you actually will go to someone's house, right? Yeah. And you walk into their closet and you... I, I even saw that you'll iron their clothes for them. You'll, I mean, you, you do this whole kind of program where you'll sit down for a couple hours and you'll walk them through this whole process, right? Yes. So the couple services I have yeah. are the shop your closet session is my most popular. And that's, yeah, going into somebody's closet in person or virtually. I right. have clients all over the country, which is really exciting to say yeah, um, because I've cool. only been at this for a little over a year. Is and, that it? Yeah. And I wow. thought I'll just... Start yeah. and see if there's even a market. I started just doing, you know, friends and family kind for of free. Testing it oh, out. Yeah, yeah, quite a while ago. And then officially launched over a year ago. So there's That's a market cool. for it, but I can even do it virtually. And I come in and create a ton of new outfits. We go through everything the why did you buy? And then I give, yeah. I take pictures and give them outfit inspiration so they can remember what outfits we created and then all the shopping tips and shopping list. Oh. Um, I also have another service I'm doing right now, which is just a mini virtual closet session. This would be great for men. I don't have a lot of male clients. I've done like one husband wife duo, which was right. so fun. I felt bad for him coming home from a long day at work <laughs> to like somebody in his closet, like, like try every on? article of clothing on. Oh, that's but, my worst thing oh, ever. My, my wife husband, says, hey, try this on. I'm like, honey, I'll just hold it up. I'm good. Yeah, it She's would like, be my try husband's it on. too. <laughs> but, oh, he was such a good sport. And <laughs> and he was like, I just, I want to look a little better and feel a little sure, better. Yeah. And and she that's would cool. like me to have some swag. So um, right. it was a little bit of a push from the wife, but he had some great stuff in his closet. Oh, and we cool. basically combined outfits. And I said, okay, put these shoes with this right and it will look a little more updated that's cool so that's fun but i can do that virtually in like a one hour session okay. if you have like a specific question if if people don't want to go through their whole wardrobe if they just want to know about sustainability i can answer like right. a specific question that we can really dive in yeah for that hour session yeah and i would imagine you educate them on how this is helping the planet yes and you know and helping even people who are, you know, like you, you, you describe some of those factories and what these people are going through, some of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
I, I would imagine you kind of put them through an educational part of this as well. Yes. Yeah. I try to do that. Um, I hope they get a lot of that from podcasts that I do sure. and Instagram and things like that. Um, the other service is that I provide is for family photos or individual photos. Oh, okay. So one of the things that we most likely shop for are pictures, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah. And I'm like, wait, you Time have a, a ton of stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we all have to match. So, <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> I'm the worst. I, I'm, uh. we, I think we turn into some kind of a, I, I don't know, the equivalent to a bridezilla when it's time for, <laughs> for family sure. photos. Yeah. But um, so I help women and individuals like navigate the yeah. taking photos. So I had a client the other day. She had messaged me, said she was doing some branding photos. She's like, but I got this. I think I'm okay. I said, okay, yeah. let me know. She'd come to one of my fashion nights. So we right. were like in contact cool. quite a bit. And she said, and then she called me like the day before and said, I don't have this. I'm on the verge of running to Target and buying all new clothes. I don't know what to do. <laughs> and we found several great outfits in her closet. She was super confident going into her session. And she was oh, like, cool. I never would have put this together. So that That's was awesome. what you were pointing yeah. on that I like. Yeah. Um, if you do a photo session, I let people borrow my clothes. I've shopped my husband's closet. Wow. I've let people borrow my kids' clothes. Anything to be as, as sustainable as possible yeah. to get the best pictures. I iron it, steam it, show up at your photo shoot wow. with it ready to go. That's impressive. And so moms don't have to be bridezilla. You just are in charge of making your kids smile, which is probably... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> its own chore <laughs> for sure. That's a chore. Well, what are your future plans? I mean, I obviously you started this a year ago, and it's going well. Obviously, which yeah. is I'm so congratulations on oh, that. By the way, you. that's that's really neat. What are your plans? Like, how do you, where do you want to see this go? And do you have other things in mind that you you want to you know create and present as well? That's such a good question. Um, aside from maybe co-hosting a makeover show with tan france yeah that would be go. up there oh yeah on the list of i we all would that, like to do I that i would turn that <laughs> down um i really want to get the message out there yeah. i feel like especially we're kind of in this place in in utah specifically i feel like california they're doing the sustainable thing even like on the east sure. coast yeah. they're doing the yeah. sustainable thing and we're kind of a couple years behind i would say and looking at my clients okay. closets we're just a couple years behind sure. so i want to be the spokesperson and locally just like get my message out there yeah. teach women how to be confident in their closet and i would love to i <laughs> The big dream would be one day find a way to take all these discarded clothes that are in these smaller sizes yeah. and somehow transition them, transition them and produce um, all different kinds of sizing. Yeah. I went to okay. um, this great organization. It's called Women Helping Women. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they take donations of business casual clothes and women who are getting back on their feet, either recovering from addiction or coming out of, you know, Right. some hard situations and trying to go back to work, they can come and shop this boutique for free. Oh, wow. And it was awesome. And I went there and I was super yeah. excited and they had a ton of clothes in like small sizes. So the average size of a woman in the U S is like 16. Okay. Um, might be 10 to 16, somewhere in there. And so they needed these like, more they needed a broader range of sizing yeah. and i think calvin klein was a great company who had donated like tons of jeans and they were all in these like teeny tiny sizes <laughs> i told them i was like let me go find an like, organization uh, maybe like a teenage like right. shelter or facility that could use yeah. some of these sizes because these are not like adult women sizes like i'm only five one and i mean probably only five foot but they wouldn't even fit me like they were they were like right, not okay. usable for what sure, they needed sure so that there's such a need out there um for more sizing and for using all of these clothes that we um just kind of use yeah. and discard and we think we're doing good and they had just a whole room full just stuffed full of bags of clothes that they weren't going to need wow and then women like me buy them and think, oh, I'll just donate this and yeah. somebody will love it. And someone's going to put it on. Someone's going to wear but it. But a lot of times it doesn't, like you said. Exactly. There's yeah. just not a need for and it. And I think, because so. I just assume that too. I'm going to donate it and, oh, someone's going to be so excited to 
have this sweatshirt <laughs> on and and you know and I never realized well what if it just sits there and then what yeah and you then know? what exactly you know? and then 200 years later there it is still exactly right and that that kind of blew yeah. my mind when you said that I or I like, discarded wow. it because it never really fit well and yeah. the seams were kind of pulling <laughs> right. and then somebody else yeah. will want it right no yeah. they don't yeah. So that would be, oh, the ultimate dreams to do some kind of a nonprofit that was able to okay. repurpose yeah. this quantity of clothing that we have. We have enough clothing on the planet to clothe the next six generations. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so shop wow. secondhand. Yeah. Wow. I love that. <laughs> well, so why don't, why don't we let our listeners know what's the name of your, your company and how, what would be the best way for them to reach out to you, ask you any questions or, or sign up for one of your services? Oh, great. Um, I am the stylist next door. So you can find me at Instagram, the stylist next door underscore UT for Utah. Okay. And on my website is the stylist next door dot net. Everything starts with a phone com- consultation. I get to know my clients really well before okay. we get together. Um, and I can do just about anything virtually, which has been super exciting. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So um I, I would, you know, challenge our listeners right now, go, go take a look at your closet and this and that. And I promise you, we all could use you. Oh, um, so you. reach out to uh, Dali and uh, check out her website, ask her any questions. And like, I love that you're like, hey, well, it starts with a phone call. And we'll just chat for a minute and we'll get yeah. to know each other. I love that. So um, I had another question I want to ask. What's a challenge you could give our listeners? A lot of people are listening to this right now. And or probably doing what I'm doing. I'm just like, wow, I've never thought of it this way. And it's really been good for me. I've been very, you know, I've been, you've educated me today. That's the best <laughs> way to say it. But what, what's a challenge you, that you could give us right now? So my challenge would be to just pick one of those four things that I mentioned. Okay. The wear and care for your clothes, shop less and with intention, shop secondhand, or support a sustainable brand. Okay. So pick one of those, and the next time you feel like you need something or you want to shop something, either go in your closet and see if you can recreate the outfit yeah. or search for a more sustainable version um, and just break it down and become more intentional. So the next time you want to shop, pick one of those pick four of things. Those things. Okay. Great advice. I love it. I love it. Well, I want to thank you for taking some time today out of your busy schedule. We had to reschedule, so thank you for being flexible. Oh, but no I'm, problem. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you on, and I really do love what you're doing, and especially how you're trying to make a difference on the planet and with the individuals and you know helping people who you know are suffering in some of these factories and this and that. And I, I just love the educational part around that as well. So um Props to you, and I'm congratulations on your success to this point. Oh, thank you. It's been so empowering. My clients have been amazing. Um, interviews have been amazing. Like I said, people yeah. really do care, yeah. and we can really make a difference. We don't have yeah. to turn our back on fashion completely. We can just make some small changes, yeah. and and it will catch up. Yeah. It really will. We can the the factories the companies they'll they'll start to really want to make changes it yeah. won't be that people are out of jobs necessarily it will be that hopefully they have better rights more more pay and that we yeah. can make a difference that way beautiful beautiful well said thank you for joining us thank you so much yeah. really this yeah, was a think, pleasure no you're you're awesome man well, Delee Cox, the, the stylist next door, right? Yes. Did I say that right? Yeah. Beautiful. Please reach out to her. Check out her website. Um, check out her services. And I, I would imagine, too, it would be a great gift to give to someone, too. You know, like, yeah. hey, sign, you know, buy one of those packages and give it away as a gift for Christmas or a birthday or an anniversary, that kind of thing. I so think that would be exciting. really cool. Yeah. So please do that. But uh, th- but again, this has been awesome sitting down with you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, there you go, listeners. I told you it'd be awesome. Um, I love what she's doing. Please check her out. And and I want to thank you guys for tuning in week after week. You guys have been so supportive. And I love you guys. And thanks for all the feedback and comments. That's been uh, great as well. Veracity Networks, thank you for believing in me. And until next time.